Okay, so welcome back to another device on, on this channel about Bitwig. And on this one, we need to talk about key tracking. Now, maybe you already know what key tracking is. It's something that you get on pretty much every synthesizer. And what it is, is that uh, this is uh, the synthesizer is going to track the keys that you play. And from C3 or maybe a different key and up, some keys with just the higher keys are going to sound a little bit brighter. And the other keys are, the keys are going to sound a little bit lower. The low keys are going to sound lower. And this is, for example, on the polysynth, uh, this is the key tracking. Notice it says filter key tracking. So if I go all the way up, it means that when I play something, the high keys will sound brighter because the filter is up. But as I go down, the filter is going to go down and the notes are just going to sound, you know, a little bit darker. Okay, so this is what the key tracking does. If uh, the key tracking is all, all the way down, this filter is reacting the same way to all the notes. This is what the key, tr key tracking means. Now, if I disable this, we get a device called key tracking right here. And this is the same idea, the same principle that this is doing. It's going to follow an instruction of when we start going up or when we get we go brighter and when we go darker. That's why you have a breakpoint right here on this one. And notice that we are on, re on the relative mode. Okay, so I'm going to go and just do some play. And notice that we are playing a higher octave, then down and then down and then down. So if I go and do play, this is going to detect where are you playing and it's going to show you which keys and which octave you're just playing. Pretty simple. And notice that the lower keys are, they kind of sound low because they are low. But now what we can do, we can go right here and say, okay, so what I want to do, I want for the higher keys, not just to do the filtering, just to do something else. And this is the, kind of the main idea of why we get this key tracking. Because if you think about this, if you wanted to do the filter, we already get it with this one, right? We kind of already get it. But maybe I just want to control it in my own fashion. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say that the higher keys are going to do a little bit more. But uh, as well, I'm going to go and do a little bit of, uh, you know, resonance. So now the higher keys are going to get much more. And as we go down on the keyboard, we're going to get much less until we get into negative amounts. Because we are going really low. Right. So that's that's what this does. Right. It's just pretty simple. Now, what what happens if you want to modify the, how this behavior, how, how this works? So I'm going to go and I'm going to go and say, OK, so now we're going to start from the C5. So these keys are going to sound a little bit brighter and everything else is just going to go darker. Pretty simple, right? We could do the same thing. If I go to low, maybe everything is going to sound super bright. And as we go low, still going to sound bright. But when you go really low, then and only then we're going to sound, you know, darker. All right. So, yeah, that's it. This is how, how this works. Now, there is one thing that you can get with this one, which is to spread. And let's say I'm going to go right here. And just a warning, be careful with the volume. We can make this uh, kind, of, kind of an envelope uh, a little bit shorter. So now everything that it's, up, uh, you know, C4 is going to be like all the way in. Right. And then only then when we play C3 and C2 is going to be somewhere in between right here. So I'm going to go and play it and watch your ears. Maybe I'm going to go in a little bit down on the out. So I'm going to go. Notice that everything sounds really harsh and it's because it's going all the way in. Notice right here. It's really high, really high. And then we'll get the in-betweens. And when we go low, we go super low. Right. Now, of course, this is something that you can use not just to do, uh, you know, to do something right here. Maybe you're playing some, uh, some something like this, you know, let me just go to this one. And this one is the same than this, but what it will do, it will play on the same octave and then go one octave down. You can see it right here. So maybe what I want, I want for the high, for this one's to do a little bit of filtering maybe like we're doing right here but I also want to do a little bit of unison I don't know just to just to do something else maybe I'm gonna do a little bit of shape so when it's higher you know we're gonna get a little bit more just very simple still a modulation device now you can argue that this is 
nice, you know, but we are not doing much and, you know, I just wish we could do something something better with this. Now, what you can do, of course, you can move the root and you can make it shorter. We, we kind of already know this, but then you get a different, uh, a different, uh, you get, you get a different value right here. You get the relative and the absolute. So I'm going to go and show you the absolute right here. So the absolute, it's the same idea, the same exact idea, but instead of getting a kind of a fixed, uh, kind of an envelope or just kind of a progression line, uh, you're going to get uh, a different, a different thing. You get, uh, something that you can move around and get a little bit more control. So for example, maybe I'm going to do the opposite. I want the low keys to go really high and I want the middle keys to go a little bit low and the higher keys to go not that high. Some, some something like this, right? Pretty simple. So now, of course, we, this is just much different than this one because we have different instructions. The high keys are not that high. The middle keys are going to go very low or low. And then the lower keys are going to go super high. And there is a difference, of course. So now with this one, you can do whatever you, whatever you want, or you can do maybe control how the filter reacts. Maybe everything is going to be high on the higher keys. And then you're going to go low, but maybe you're not going to go low that much. You're just going to do just a tiny bit. And of course, all of this is just to get a bit more control than the, the one we get right here on this key tracking. That's pretty much the whole idea. You just get more control. Now this is dark. And when we go low, it's still dark, but not that dark. Right? And this is also a common problem when making tracks. Sometimes we are doing something and when we change octaves, the lower keys, sometimes they sound really, really low. So then we need to kind of enable or do some trick uh, with EQ and compression and maybe doing a little bit of filtering or something like that on the higher keys. So we can keep kind of, a uh, you know, some, uh, uh, we, we can get the, the, uh, more, uh, get a more consistent sound, right? Between the, the high frequencies and the low frequencies. So this is something very common and maybe you could just get it with the key track. You know, whenever you go low, you go a little bit higher and whenever you go high, you just maybe keep it or go down. And of course, all of this, you can do it with modulation. Maybe let's say you want to do more unison or sub or go crazy. I don't know. I'm going to go and do the pitch. Why not? Since we are here. So I'm going to go and do play. Now it's going to sound a little bit crazy. And we get different sounds when we go to different places. All right. Okay, so that one that was the key tracking, just a much more uh, cool way of using key tracking uh, with a synthesizer, and we are using it with the uh, uh, with the polysynth. But maybe you want to use a I don't know an Arturia plugin or well, Serum or something like that. You can maybe disable the key tracking from that uh, synthesizer and use this one. Right? It's just much 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 useful. All right, so hopefully you like this. Remember to like and subscribe and to check Patreon because everything I upload right here on YouTube is going to be first on Patreon, maybe weeks or months uh, earlier. All right, so see you on the next one.